So thank you for the introduction. Um, I believe there's a bit of a gap in current research when it comes to combining advanced and some quantification models with advanced software. And we which just saw it is often in practice just a huge challenge. Um, I'm trying to address this issue with this talk. Um, first of all, I start with an um, exemplary application um, doing uncertainty quantification on a rather costly model. I'm going to introduce the MIT uncertainty quantification library, which is a modular framework for facilitating such projects. And uh, most importantly, I'm going to present a new language, league named language, which is uh, a new approach to coupling UQ and the model. There's some interesting uh, implications regarding benchmarks and cloud resources as well. First of all, uh, people involved with this are other elements who I work with on the uh, tsunami. Mark was my postdoc supervisor and former PhD supervisor. Um, Andy and Matt uh, started the MIT UQ library. Uh, I joined the project a couple of years ago. And in fact, my wife has been helping me a lot with the HPC applications in the cloud. Uh, she's been doing this in her free time. She's working in the industry. So um, first of all, the uh, exemplary application I'm going to show um, is multi-level Markov chain Monte Carlo on a tsunami. Um, we've seen the multi-level idea often enough. Uh, so I'll just say for multi-level Markov chain Monte Carlo, it's essentially the same. There are some additional intricacies. Um, the main difference comes from well, now we are drawing samples, of course. Uh, so we uh, can exploit that, for example, running chains on finer levels, we can use samples from coarser levels as informed proposals. Um, beyond that, you can think of it as multi-level Monte Carlo, essentially. Uh, the tsunami application that we have, and I'm just going to glance over this to give you a brief idea. Um, we built our hierarchy by having a fully resolved um, uh, solver of a uh, shallow water equation uh, with the finest available data of the bathymetry of the coast of Japan that we had. Uh, for coarser levels, we are doing the obvious thing, coarsening the mesh. But there's also something specific to hyperbolic solvers, which can be interesting. Namely, we are smoothing, uh, we are smoothing the bathymetry in order to get rid of some small islands that were actually causing, solver, uh, causing issues to our solvers as well. Uh, all the way to going through a linear bathymetry for our process model, which I call the tsunami in a bathtub, which is obviously very wrong, but because of it's extremely fast, we can exploit multi-level here. Um, the results that we get from the multi-level Markov chain Monte Carlo application are really nice. So obviously the tsunami in the bathtub gives us a huge variance because of the inaccurate model. Still, it gives us the rough region of where the tsunami came from. Um, once we introduce bathymetry, of course, the distribution becomes a bit more interesting. And for the finest level, we have a relatively concentrated posterior around the true origin of the tsunami, indicated as a red cross here. Uh, there are many interesting aspects to um, method and uh, to the methods on UQ and model side here. What I'm focusing mostly on is the software, um, in particular, because even though we're using multi level here, it's still a very costly problem. So we uh, did run this on a 3,500 course on the SuperMOOC NG computer in Munich. Um, moving to the technical underpinnings of this all. The MIT Uncertainty Quantification Library is essentially a modular toolbox for UQ. Already contains a lot of um, implemented uh, algorithms and it also has some nice modeling interfaces. Uh, for example, if you build a Bayesian posterior in MAC, then this can be represented in such a graph structure where a posterior is just a product of two densities. Uh, for your likelihood and prior, you can use predefined densities and plug in your model as just another node in this graph. It's a bit overkill for just a Bayesian posterior, of course, but if you imagine coupling multiple models together, then this becomes really helpful in giving you a clean structure. And in fact, this kind of idea of taking a uh, model graph and uh, considering the forward model itself to be just another node in this is something I'll explore later. UQ methods themselves are also built in a modular way in MAC, for example, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods are always built in this triplet where the chain is driving the actual sampling, kernel does accept reject and proposal does well, proposals obviously. And with a lot of pre-existing implementations, you can construct pretty much any MCMC method you can think of. 
And based on this framework, uh, as part of my PhD project, I implemented multi-level Markov chain Monte Carlo, uh, specifically exploiting parallelization, um, which for multi-level Markov chain Monte Carlo is not as trivial as for just plain multi-level Monte Carlo, uh, because you have samples being passed around between different levels. Um, but still, uh, with some load balancing, you can achieve some fairly good results. Um, what I'm doing is essentially I'm splitting up all processes to work together in groups on parallelized models. We have multiple instances of these groups so that we can have parallel chains running per level and we can parallelize across levels as well. And you really need all of this in order to scale it very far because any of these rates of parallelization just don't take you very far. Yeah. Ask a question. Sure. Um, so when you have so many parallel chains, yeah, um, how do you think them? You see, because you need to generate random increments and uh, the seeding, uh, if you put, the, of course, the, the random numbers in the random number generator are not random. Yeah, so, uh, They're only quasi-random or pseudo-random. So you seed, you have to seed the generators. And in order to get really from many chains, it's more information when you increase the number of chains the numerical information, you, you need to see them in, in a proper way. So have you considered this or have you just used what is in the in the box uh, in the MIT MOOC box? So I will build just the default that we have for these generators. Um, I believe it's not that relevant because since we are parallelizing across servers and within the models themselves, the number of uh, also sort of parallelization of chains that we have is somewhat limited in our application. Um, I assume if you have something like a very small model that itself doesn't parallelize far, you really have extremely large levels of chains, and that's probably more of a topic, I think. Um, I really look into that. So I, I, I don't want to scare you, yeah, but uh, if you um, seed all the generators with the same seed, yeah, you compute 2048 times the same. Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm sure it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Yes, I'm just interested. So, but this is somehow you relied on what they did in this uh, in this MOOC, uh, MOOC MIT library. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm really building on top of these uh, existing FCMC methods. Um, my part is really the hierarchy and uh, okay. Right. So even for normal multi-level Monte Carlo, if you do it in parallel, it, it is not a problem specific to uh, to multi. Yeah, yeah but uh, for example, for for QMC uh, and for for sparse grid, uh, it is not an issue. Yeah. Yeah. There are random generators that you can, that, yeah, that yeah. can create multiple streams, and um, that are indexed by the uh, thread count by, by the thread index, yeah. which you can uh, which produce statistically independent streams. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 one I frequently use is called random one, two, three. Okay. Um, and, and that seems, um, yeah. yeah I, mean, know, I know there are these techniques, but I wanted to know what. I imagine that's not what he's focused on, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he basically took uh, what is somehow wired into the MOOC MIT box. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, so this is part of this modularity, basically, where you can take the existing MCMC infrastructure and build on top. So um, that's what I did here. Okay, thanks. Um, regarding scalability, so this is just for a very simple test problem. Um, turns out very, very nicely. Um, I think the main challenge at this point was uh, getting load balancing to work well because a priori you don't necessarily need, you, you don't necessarily know how much work you're going to spend on which level. Um, but yeah, overall this looks very nice. But <laughs> so. Um, Conceptually, it's really easy to now take this parallelized UQ framework or to take this um, Jello water solver, for example, and combine them in order to solve the problem at hand and achieve, at the, achieve those results that I just showed you. Uh, the practical side of things looked quite a bit different. Um, unfortunately, we spent way too many weeks on trying to make these software packages to work together. Even though it's conceptually easy, in practice, we have things like MAC itself has its own idea of how parallelization should work. The ExoHype uh, hyperbolic solver we used has its very own really advanced ways of parallelizing the PDE itself. Turns out both of them were not immediately compatible. Other aspects were that the uh, shallow water solver ExoHype is extremely optimized 
on the specific architecture that you're running on. So they actually use code generation, which also doesn't really help in using it as sort of a library from the outside world. An additional aspect that really shouldn't be underestimated by the way in these projects is that in order to make this work, you really need experts from both sides to be completely involved in well, coupling these two code bases and really understand what the respective other side is doing. And I think that's also something that's holding back a lot of projects. I thought there has to be a better way to do this. And Umbridge is essentially the product of that. The idea that I had was instead of traditionally compiling software packages together and uh, exchanging data between the different parts, the shared memory essentially, I take a route which is somewhat unconventional in our field, I think, but in fact, very established in industry, which is uh, we let these two software pieces be essentially independent running programs and have them talk to each other through HTTP. Now with HTTP, we think, uh, many people just think about websites and that's where it originally comes from, but you can really think of it as being sort of a protocol, which is just um, well, convenient enough without incurring too much overhead. And it's just a way for different applications to talk to each other, could just be running on your laptop. The idea is now that due to these programmings being independent, we have a number of gains. First of all, it's now possible to couple uncertainty quantification and model codes across different languages. So for example, we can take a MAC code written in C++, like my parallelized model level MCMC, and now easily couple it uh, to the uh, ExoHype Shallow Water Solver, or take the exact same um, MAC program and apply it to a UQ benchmark written in Python. Likewise, of course, on the uh, UQ side of things, you can also use arbitrary software frameworks because pretty much any modern programming languages understands HTTP. And in fact, if you're familiar with curl, which is a command line tool on Unix systems for sending HTTP requests, you can in fact now use curl in order to trigger one of these tsunami runs. There's nothing else you have to modify. Um, in practice, uh, we've built a couple of hyper libraries so that in Python, for example, uh, using this framework looks like this. You just tell Umbridge to connect to a certain model, which in this case might be running on your own machine. And then calling, uh, then doing an evaluation of this model is really just calling the model with a parameter vector and you get the results. Um, there's, there are likewise similar interfaces for Jacobian and Hessian actions, but it also extends in that direction. Writing a model on the other end, um, it's kind of similar. You inherit from an Umbridge model in Python, for example. Um, you define what the input and output dimensions will be, and you define what the model does. In this case, I'm just taking the first entry of an input vector, multiplying it by two. Instead, you could take the input vector, solve a PDE, or whatever your model is supposed to do. We also have an integration for C++, which is essentially the same. And uh, we also have an integration for Mac. And uh, if you are up for a little bit of coding, then Integrating something like MATLAB should also be something you can do in a day. There's one interesting aspect that comes with separating software through network communication, which means that now we can take our model and plug it into a container. So in case you're not familiar with it, uh, containers are a technology which you can think of as sort of lightweight virtual machines. The idea is that you can package your software, including all of its dependencies, in an environment that you can choose for yourself. And the entire package is essentially now a black box which you can move onto other computers regardless of what the operating system and uh, software setup on that machine is. And you can immediately run it there. For example, the tsunami I showed you before, um, if you have the Docker container system installed on your system, uh, can be run by just that single line which is going to download and run this tsunami as we set it up. And then talking to it and triggering evaluations looks like this, for example, in Python. One thing where I'd like to link up with you um, is specifically regarding benchmarks. Because uh, last time we had a group which was very interested in having a UQ benchmarks defined, which could then be used to now comparably test different uh, UQ algorithms. Um, 
there was a lot of interest. We kind of got started, but I believe the point where we got stuck was essentially the technical side because we all use different tools, which are of course not really compatible. So it's not easy to provide one single implementation of a benchmark problem that then everyone could use. I believe that Umbridge now bridges that gap. And um, I'd like to get involved with hopefully the group that we had last time and maybe some other people who are interested in it as well in order to come up with a set of benchmarks for the community that could be used in the future. Uh, we've already started setting up such a system. Uh, this is more or less supposed to be a proposal and I'd like to hear your opinions on this. Uh, we have a couple of um, defined models now ready to use and fully documented. And what's interesting is we're really employing this containerization to the fullest. So we have uh, automated testing in order to ensure reliability. And we also automatically build these images. So uh, those are essentially constructed in a reproducible way. Finally, one aspect, once you have um, containers available, the uh, benefit of portability, meaning that you can take a container and just run it on any other system also translates to HPC resources. And currently it's quite interesting to see the two worlds converging where traditional HPC systems tend to have this rather complex and non-standard software setup, possibly outdated compilers, not every software available as dependencies. They are interested in using containers for exactly that reason and making software setup essentially as easy as just moving a container onto these systems and having access to a supercomputer. On the other hand, um, cloud services, which are quite a big thing these days, um, have this containerization fully integrated, but they are also interested in moving towards the HPC direction. So it's quite interesting to see this kind of convergence. Um, what I'm going for is currently um, the uh, cloud application side of things because the container uh, support is more is more developed on that end. Um, currently, I'm actually running this, or working on running this tsunami on Google Cloud. Um, I'm not really advertising for Google, it's just the one that I picked. Uh, essentially, any modern cloud provider will give you something comparable. So um, what you can think of, if you're not familiar with it, what you can think of a cloud provider is essentially, they give you computational resources for rent. What's interesting is that you can get vastly different levels of abstraction. So for example, you might just get access to a virtual machine where you have full control over the operating systems that you install and you're fully responsible for the entire setup. There's sort of an intermediate layer where you essentially use a container orchestrator, which is a system where you can say, I want to have, for example, 24 instances of my tsunami, a tsunami container running, and I want to have them connected to some other model in some specific way, et cetera. And on the highest level, which is something which is I think too much abstraction for us, you can in fact just dump a piece of code into that system and it's going to be run and you don't even have to worry about compilers at that point. Um, so the setup that we're going for is this Kubernetes orchestrator. Um, what we're going for for a simple way of getting essentially your model to run as sort of an HPC environment is that we have, we instruct Kubernetes to start multiple instances of the model and in front of this, we have a load balancer, which just makes sure that from the outside, you can talk to this cluster. You can simply tell it, now give me a model evaluation, please. And it's going to take care of distributing the load across independent nodes in the background. Um, the interesting thing about this is that with this container orchestrator, we can provide this as a reference setup, which means if you want to use the same setup, you can just take the specification file that we write for this Kubernetes system and you just replace the name of the uh, container that, we, that you want to run, and you replace, for example, my tsunami for whatever model you're running. Going a bit more into like traditional HPC, if you want to have MPI across multiple nodes, then this is something which you can in fact also get on this Kubernetes system. Um, we're using an existing MPI system that actually comes from machine learning applications. But it turns out it also works for, in order to achieve sort of a more traditional HPC setup on these cloud applications. Again, the interesting bit is that this entire setup is something which we can put into a specification file. And all you need to do in order to run a different model is plug in the name of your own model container. 
And again, you can ship whatever software environment you'd like to have. For example, in a container, you can base it on an Ubuntu 18.04 system or something. Uh, there's no need to worry about uh, specific uh, compiler versions or downloading dependencies or something as you would have on traditional HPC systems. All right, so um, finally, I'd like to conclude that uh, Umbridge is now providing a new way for coupling uh, models and uncertainty quantification codes. And we are starting to build this entire environment around it, where on the one hand, you get access to um, uncertainty quantification benchmarks. And specifically, I'd like to reach out to you to build up sort of a standardized set of benchmarks. And also as a way to take this further, um, we also obtain now easy access to HPC resources. Once you support this Umbridge interface in your model, you can take our predefined uh, reference setups and immediately get HPC setups running on a cloud infrastructure or on your own, own server system if you have Kubernetes installed. And potentially in the future, if HPC systems converge further into that direction, also supercomputers as well. Uh, finally, here are some uh, links to the respective projects and two related publications. One is about the uh, MAC library and the other one about this parallelized MLMCMC method and the Tsunami application I briefly showed in the beginning. Okay, so thank you very much.